Hello everyone and welcome to the preview video for all the patch changes coming with the busy year milestone 210 and there are a lot coming um, even more than I can mention in this video as there's a lot of um, balancing happening and a lot of fleshing out and the first part of that we have right in front of us the T80 UD coming in for the Soviets in the 79th Guards tank corps as this is now the biggest boy on the battlefield 20 penetration 21 frontal armor compared to the TADU's 20 frontal armor and better accuracy from 60 to 65 percent accuracy so a really accurate high rate of fire auto loader gun with high frontal armor it's also the most expensive tank now though 350 points, but this will give the 79th even more oomph than it had before. It lost a couple of TADU cards. You only have one card of these now. More cards of the TADUD, three cards there. And you get another unit in this deck now. The TO55 is available in this deck as well. So quite a bit more options, quite a bit more choices to do in this deck now than before in the tank tab. In between TADU, TADUDs, T55s. T62s and T80Bs and BVs. So, a lot of choices here. And there are also some other units added to this deck. One of them is the UATS to the Rajvetka that also comes in 39th as a transport option for the Rajvetka with its good optics and its exceptional stealth. So, recon version of the UATS. And then a Mi 2 recon helicopter available in these decks now as well, next to the Mi 8. Very good optics compared to the exceptional optics here. Um, but coming way cheaper and um, the, there are some other changes to helicopters as well. And then one last unit that is added is the RKHM as a option for command that also comes in the 39th and that is a, un, a lightly armored unarmed RKM. H, uh, yeah, so come in and give you some CV, but armored, basically. So that's the thing there. And yeah, you get them in two divisions. Then the 39th on top of the Mi2 and the RKHM also now gets one T80BK leader. So a leader option more for this deck as well. And then we had go over to the East Germans. The East Germans get in their decks quite a couple of new units. First one is a Falchermeger with SMGs. So this is quite helpful. Um, yeah, more forward deployment extra, uh, uh, units and this time one with three firepower, uh, three medium MGs. So more firepower and you can now if you want start with a lot of Falschermegers <laughs> in the fourth Motorisierte Schützen Division. Um, so yeah, quite the firepower there. In the AA tab, you now got a Strella 1 as well. Not the most amazing AA, but it's an option. Instead of the yeah, replacing one card of Flakraketen, which you couldn't put all into your deck anyways. Uh, 40 percent accuracy on static and on motion so at least you can drive and shoot inaccurately but yeah not the most accurate AAP but against helicopters pretty decent can deal good damage there so it's really cheap it comes with a lot of numbers question is do you really want to take it over the Strela 10M that has quite a bit better accuracy and only cost you 10 points more that's the the big question here but you have the option between both of them now, so that is the nice part there. Same thing happened to the 7th Panzer, so yeah, this is it here. T-55's gotten cheaper, as we said before. And then in KDA, you have quite a couple of changes as well, as you get uh, another card of the Mi uh, 24P. You can take two of these now, which is a super powerful helicopter and helpful with the AT in this deck. Then you get 
conquerors now as well. Pale Air conquerors. So way better ATGM versions and options in this deck. A lot of price changes here as well. The VBP, for example, got down to 15 points now. In the uh, artillery tab, you now get the D20 howitzers as well as an option if you want to take those. Uh, next to the D30 and the M46. And then in the tank tab, you get Conquerors in the SPWs as well. So a lot more AT, GM, uh, AT options here. And in the air tab, some um, arm 30s. Wait. Is this here? Oh no, um, in the artillery tab. I mean, yeah, the arm 30 70s as well. So some heavy rocket launchers here if you want to take them. A lot more options, cluster or normal, that come in all the East German divisions with the normal rockets, but only with, in this deck, with the cluster now. So a new unit here with the cluster. Arm 70, 80 G, uh, multiple rocket launcher. So, yep, lots more options here. Decks have to change. Quite a bit more anti-tank firepower. T-34 also got cheaper. That's one of the balance patches. And that's it for the pack side. Let's move over to the NATO and start with Territorial Commando Süd, where these now got Iltus Milan with Milan 1s, next to the P4 with the Milan 2 as another ATGM option, if you want to have some more ATGMs in this deck. And the other helpful anti-tank option is an Alpha Jet with clusters that can help you out dealing with tanks as well. So, as you can see in Territoria, Commando Süd and KDA, the idea is adding anti-tank without adding tanks. And I think that's a good idea. The Milan 2 uh, may be uh, helpful. Um, you maybe you take it, though you are really, li re really limited in slots, and I would say the P4 is still the go-to here. But still, pretty helpful. In uh, second Panzer Grenadier, nothing major has changed. You also now have transport options with Vicon and that one. Let me go into the second Panzer Grenadier. And you have one more Leo leader card now. Leo 2A3 leader card, if you want to take that. Uh, other than that, only the, the, some of the Recon units now have uh, Recon units here. The M113 of there is the new one here that you get in all the German divisions and the 8th Infantry as well. And then in 5th Panzer though, there is a new tank as well. Just like the Soviets get the biggest boy onto the battlefield, the Germans do so now too. As the Leo 2A4 has arrived with one more frontal armor and better accuracy compared to the Leo 2A3. So also costing you quite a bit more, uh, but more penetration, more frontal armor and more accuracy. So an all around quite a bit better tank than the 2A3. For sure on par with the big boys of other nations now. And that is quite nice. You get three cards of these, uh, one card of these only, with three availability. So you have to use them carefully. But the 2A4 here is powerful. And then the other addition, next to the one we just saw at Second Pentagon here, is in the helicopter tab, where you now get two cards of Apache rockets. Those went five points up, so they're not quite as cost efficient as they had been before, but they still should be quite powerful. So nice option here, differentiating the helicopter tab a bit from the one of 2nd Panzer Grenadier and making this maybe a better choice than 2nd Panzer Grenadier slightly as yes you don't get Falcher Megas but now at least you can deal with units behind your lines really effectively with the Rocket Apache a great addition to this deck next to the Leo 2A4 and yeah, really differentiating this deck now a bit more from the 2nd Panzer Grenadier and then let's move over to the Americans which also got some nice, cool new units. Um, this deck here now, now also got the F-111 with guided bombs, uh, the GBUs in the 8th. And then in the recon tab, you also get the 
transport M13 here, but you also get an M981 recon vehicle with good optics. The Bradley, by the way, now is more expensive, and Totus have been nerfed, but more to about that later. And then you get a new Kiova with exceptional optics and rockets. Instead of the Kiova Warrior, you get another exceptional optics helicopter that is significantly cheaper if you want to just have an exceptional optics helicopter and not having the hellfires with it. Or if you want to have both, you can now have both as well. So that is an option as well. And yeah, that is the change here. The one change that is there in 8th, uh, in 3rd US, is that you also, on top of all of this, get one card of H.A. Abrams CPs. So you can have a command H.A. Abrams now, if you want to. That's obviously up to you. Um, yeah. Other than that, let's go to the balance changes. And the biggest one is that artillery now... Or one of the bigger ones for sure is that artillery now is mostly more expensive and like across the board they got up in price as last time they obviously got better in efficiency and they might be a bit too efficient in the current vanilla version so you reacted with a bit of a price increase uh, to most of these guns which i think is a good idea and um, then seat should be flying a bit better now i'm still not sure how good it is i'm Exceptional optics have been improved in its effectiveness, so exceptional recon units should scout the enemy a bit better, which is nice. Recon still my biggest issue with the game. I'm not sure this fixes it. I would say the good optics is the problem, not the uh, problem, not the exceptional optics. But exceptional optics improvement still is nice. And then um, infantry transports. I'm not quite sure where to find them actually. In which tab? I think they're here. Yeah. No, uh, infantry transports, I guess we can just go on to an infantry unit and see, now have a speed of 100 kmh instead of 108 kmh. They also have now different hit points though, they have 8 hit points, but all of them cost 20 points. The um, jeeps are still fa faster, Uatsus are still at 108 kmh, so there's a difference in speed now between the small and mid-sized transport options. Uh, all of them cost 20 points now though, so you have to be careful, you want to get them back and sell them. Oh, and if you throw them at the enemy, they get 20 points out of your pockets, so you really have to be ca more careful now with transport units. Um, and then a big change is in general to hit points um, of transports and more importantly of helicopters helicopters have a lot of price changes and a lot of hit point changes uh, heavy hawks for example the, the cobra family now has eight hit points the po uh, the bo has four hit points so atgms uh, no aa missiles uh, man pads with four damage can be now more potent against some classes of helicopters they are still as ineffective against Apaches as they had been before, they still need 4 hits here with 10 hit points and 1 frontal armor. But against a BO 105, uh, Red Eye now one shots them. So that's a big change. Gazelles also 4 hit points. Lynx 6 hit points with the British. 10 hit points still on the Akula, obviously. B24 still 10 hit points. Mi 2s 6 hit points. And uh, the Mi 8s are at 8 hit points now as well so there you get two shotted by red eye qhd i think yeah six hit points as well alouette at four so a lot of changes in this segment um yep helicopters being quite a bit different then the to uh the to two change i was talking about earlier and that one is pretty important to two now has only 65% accuracy on all of its platforms. So quite a bit less accurate, especially with veterans here. Not as strong anymore. And then the other one, the other change is that the Dragon 2 is now 18 instead of 19 penetration. And the Medis is 17 instead of 18 penetration. So these things don't one-shot as many ATG, uh, IFVs and AP uh, armored personnel carriers anymore. 
as they did before. They're not as strong. And the, the one the difference, it doesn't look as big, but it means that they really need two shots against quite a couple more vehicles than before, or three shots against others, against the heavier armored tanks. So quite a significant nerf once more to the Dragon 2. Maybe might allow to make some of these units a bit cheaper again in the future. We will have to see how it plays out. Um, and then there's a lot of price changes. And in the helicopter department, for example, uh, the Apache ATGM got cheaper, the normal Apache got a bit cheaper, the Rocket 1 got a bit more expensive, things like that. T tanks like the T-55, like I said, got more expensive. The BMD uh, and the Milan 2, uh, not, not the Milan, the Marder 2, uh, IFVs got cheaper and so on. Like, there's too many to go over. There's just so many uh, balance changes, small balance changes, this time by Eugen, that going over all of them would take too long. What we do instead is having a look on a new division, uh, a new map, and that map is called Rift, and it's a pretty fancy one. So let's have a look on that. Rift is really, really cool. You might have seen it in some screenshots already, but this map is not like the others, as here we go. It's a beautiful, beautiful, like, twilight slash night map made by Eugen. And it's a pretty open one as well. Not that many light of sight blockers, so this one is one for the big boys. There's no gameplay implication for this just yet. Um, you might want to give Eugen your feedback regarding that. Um, if you think they should implement vision reduction or so for this let them know. I I like it that they currently, like, I, I'm fine with it not having any gameplay implications. I like the looks enough, and the map itself is quite fun to play. Though, yeah, night versions for all maps could be cool, especially for the campaign, I guess. But in general, really, really nice that we have a map like this now, and Eugen is trying something new out. And the map itself, as I said, a pretty cool one as well. Um, yeah, really looking forward to the patch. As I said, a lot of small balance changes across the board. I think I covered the big ones, and I hope you're looking forward to this one as much as I do. Testing out the TADU UDs, the Leo 2s, seeing how well exceptional optics recons work now on the battlefield. They didn't give us an exact number there, I think it's just a slight improvement, but it feels better for sure. Um, yeah, still not quite solving my issues with recon, but making it a bit less prevalent, so really looking forward to this patch. Really looking forward to playing it on Friday at the second uh, Friday Night Warno event that you can sign up to still if you want to. And where we will also talk with some of the Eugen devs about the game and play with one of them, with them in the tournament itself. So if you want to play me, possibly, or a Eugen dev, or just want to have a fun 2v2 tournament, sign up for it. You can find the information down below. And you can also find the links to the previews of the French and British division down there. With that said, I hope to see you all in the next one, and bye-bye. Thanks for watching.